Hi, and welcome to another insightful lesson. In today's, um, we are looking at the reading component and we are zooming in to um, some tried and tested tips and strategies that would help you to get the required band score. We've looked at um, a number of these in the previous lessons while we dealt with the types of questions that you encounter in the reading test. It's equally important that we highlight um, this particular aspect of, of, of the test because these are what would help you to get the band score that you hope to achieve. The first we are looking at is for you to read the questions first. You have to read the questions before you go to the passages to read and get the, the answers. While you read the questions, it's very, very significant. It's very crucial for you to underline the keywords. These are words that are very central as far as the questions are concerned. So once you get them, you're likely to get the answers when you go to the reading to, to, to the passages to skim, scan and read cl closely. Then again, you have to read instructions. For every set of questions that you, you find in a reading test, there will be an instruction regarding, for example, the number of words that you should write for, for an answer. In no more than one word, it means that you cannot exceed that, um, that word limit. In, in no more than three words and or a number, it means that you cannot exceed that. You can do one, one word, two words, two words and a number, you can do three words. You can do three words and a number. That's the highest you can go. And remember, when it comes to word count, IELTS considers hyphenated words as one word. So, for example, in the in the heading of, of this particular slide, I have results-oriented um, tips and strategies. So, results-oriented, that's one word. Tips, two. And then for um, the, the third one, strategies, we can just ignore the, the symbol and over there for, for now. So you need to pay attention to, to the word limit as part of the instructions. Also, you may have um, instructions on how your answers should appear. For example, um, for questions 30 to 40, write A, B, C, or D. If you write the words that correspond with these um, letters, definitely your answers would be marked wrong. So read every instruction before you tackle any set of questions that you have. You need to think about time. This is one thing that um, results in a lot of failures with regard to the band score that we need to achieve. We are unable to manage our time and so we are unable to get the, the band score that we need. Think about time. If you are um, equally dividing 60 minutes among the three passages and, and questions that you have, you're going to be spending about 20 minutes on each of, of the sections. But of course, the difficulty level varies. Section one is the least difficult. So at least you spend 15 minutes thereabout on, on it, regardless of whether you have 13 or 14 questions over there. 15 minutes should be enough for section one, 20 minutes for section um, two, and then 25 minutes for section three, because section three is believed to be the most difficult. It's not always the case. So you just, um, when you get any set of questions, you just need to go through and know how to apportion um, the time, of course. If you are plucking fruit, you want to get the low hanging ones that are equally good. So for the questions that you can easily answer them, you tackle them first. If you're finding difficulty with any um, question, you just skip it and go to the next ones. As, at least you should secure your 30 correct answers before you struggle with the rest of, of the 10 because 30 would give you a band seven if you're doing academic reading. For those doing general training, you need about 34, 35 correct answers for, for seven. And so you use the same strategy of, of getting the, 
the easiest questions um, answered first before you move on to the um, most difficult ones. Then you should write your answers directly onto the answer sheet. You don't have a transfer time like you do in the listening um, components. It means that once you find the answer, you put it directly onto the answer sheet. And because you're writing um, in, in pencil, it will, be, it will be okay for you to erase and rewrite if you have a change of mind at any point. Do not write your answers on the question paper and hope to transfer them. Because time may just, you know, beat you and you'd find yourself um, wanting. You check your spelling because once your spelling is wrong, your answer is wrong. You're just getting almost all of the answers, except of course the question, um, the instruction um, tells you to um, put the synonyms of the words contained in, in the passages for answers. Otherwise, all the words you need for answers are contained in the passage. So under no circumstance should you have your spelling um, wrong. You think about grammar as well. For a question type such as um, sentence completion, once the word or words that you you use to complete the sentence doesn't fit in grammatically, then it means there is a problem with a particular answer and it's likely to be the wrong one. So you do the grammar check. This should help you get some of the answers um, right. Then you think about writing all of your answers in capital letters. This is a, a tip of you playing safe. If the answer is supposed to be a proper noun and you begin with a lower case, your answer is, is wrong and you can throw away marks that, that easily. So you, you write everything in capital letters, then you, have, you, you don't have to bother yourself about which one is a, a proper noun and which one is a common noun. You need to also think about the right strategy for each of the types of questions. We looked at, at this when we were talking about um, types of questions. For example, if you're answering true, false, not given questions, you know that the arrangement of the questions um, correspond with the arrangement of information that, ans um, that answers them. And so you don't, you know, waste your time looking at, you know, places or portions that wouldn't give you um, any answer. Think about the question, know the question type that you're answering, and then you use the right strategy. If you're, if you're for example, answering matching headings to paragraphs questions, you know that you need to be able to find the topic sentences in there because they are the sentences that would help you to get the most appropriate heading for um, the particular paragraph that you're looking at. Then last but not the least, actually um, I consider it's the most important of all of this because you, you, you may have all of the tips in your head. But if you don't put them into practice before taking your final test, then the, the knowledge of, of the tips wouldn't you know, yield any results for you. You should practice very often. And as you practice, you are doing that with, with a mindset that I want to achieve um, some results at the end. I want to improve my scores in the end. If you get a particular question wrong, you should know why that answer is wrong and why this is the right answer. You're not just, you know, practicing, you pick this um, question, you practice, you get um, 20 over 30, you leave it, you go to the next one. That wouldn't yield any results for you. So make sure that you, you, your practice is very effective. Your practice is very, very effective. Improve your scores with each practice. Then in the end, if you sit for the final test, you're sure to get... Um, your required band score. Thank you very much for the time. Um, have fun practicing and see you in the next lesson.